This is Jonathan Agaf here for Pro Boxing Fans. We're here at the first press conference for Josh Kelly against David Avanesian for the European Welterweight Championship, joined by his trainer, Adam Booth. Now, Adam, that was a very fiery press conference, something maybe we didn't sort of quite see coming. What's your immediate reaction to what happened in the press conference? If you're referring to what Avanesian's manager was chatting, it means nothing to me. You think it was fiery, I think it was actually a waste of time because all that matters is you've got a genuine competitive fight for the European Championship with two world ranked fighters who are, you know, one's at the top of his game and has proven where he's at and the other one is a rising star that I believe has got potential way beyond this level. So that's what we should be talking about. We should be talking about the fight and not a bit of a two-bit cheap shot in from a manager. I mean, he did make some quite difficult accusations, I suppose. Um, he called you a con man. He said, you know, you threatened him. Do you, what do you take from, from these comments? Is it just part of the game? Is it, what, what was your reaction to all of this? I have no reaction. He means nothing to me. He means nothing in boxing. So I have no point. When I, when, I, when I was walking to the train station this morning, little Jack Russell started barking at me. I didn't get down on my hands and knees and start barking back at it. So I got, I'm not interested. I'm interested and excited about Josh Kelly's preparation and this fight on March 28th. Let's move on to the fight, um, obviously being rescheduled. Uh, we know what happened in the first fight, Josh Kelly got ill. There was a huge sort of social media reaction against him. Um, quite difficult to see, to be honest. Um, how, what was your role? How, how did your role, um, how did you, let me try and get a phrase out. What was your role in helping Josh sort of get through this? I'm sure it's not, not something he's really experienced before. Uh, did you play any part in sort of helping him through it? It's just, look, we, we, we do what we do, and it's just a process of time and realising that time shows everything. And what time has shown Josh is that all those opinions mean nothing. All that matters is his life, what he does, how he lives it, who he lives it with, and in terms of his professional career, what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. But opinions mean nothing. And you, you'll never get a rise out of me because I think I've been here long enough to realise that it's all a load of bullshit, all that matters is what happens on fight night. Do we have an even better fight now? I mean, if you look at Alex Dilmagani against Francisco Fonseca, that obviously got cancelled as well, and then we saw an even an incredible fight, one of the fights of the year. In this one, is it an even better fight on March 28th now? Better than what? Better what it, than it would, would have been. Oh, absolutely, because it's main event and it's for the European title. And David Evanesian is now top five in the world. So in, ter in terms of the prize, the prize is much bigger. I mean, since obviously that fight, well, the fight didn't happen. David avanesian has gone on to score three wins, um, two first round knock knockouts. Josh Kelly has won one, drawn one. Who goes into this most confident would you say and if it isn't Josh how will you sort of psych him up or does it even does he even need psyching up for this one it's a pointless question they're both going to step into that ring confident believing and only thinking about winning and that, that the question that you ask me is nothing that's relevant just moving on what is your sort of prediction going into this fight I think I think Josh has now got a perfect fight perfect opportunity to show exactly what he's about that he's not just flashy and talented and skillful that, it's, that actually there's a lot of steel behind this, this, this young fighter and that he's got the ingredients and he's made of the right stuff. Just moving on to some of your other stable quickly, uh, Mick Conlon, uh, unbeaten featherweight, moving on to possibly a world title shot this year. Well, yeah, uh, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, again in New York, um, and then you know, dealing with that, which is a, a strong competitive dude that he's got in front of him. Uh, Michael, at his age and where he's at now, his amateur pedigree and everything now that he's evolving into as a pro fighter, this year he should be banging on the door for a world championship. And, and Shannon Courtney spoke to her last year in October. She said hopefully this year be sort of a world title shot as well. Um, she's obviously scored that knockout at York Hall. What can you tell us on her upcoming fights? Uh, well, Shannon, Shannon's not uh, world championship level yet. She's still got a lot of developing to do. She's still got to step up in levels from the opponents she's had, that, that she's had up until now. So that's where she's at. Just moving on to some possible fights that may happen. Obviously, De Derek Chisora and Alexander Usyk uh, touted for May, I believe. How would you see that fight playing out? And obviously, David Hay as manager. How much has he added to Derek? Um, I don't know, but we know what Derek is. And what he is, is a tough, seasoned, world-class heavyweight who, who went 12 rounds of Vitaly Klitschko. Uh, had, a, had a great fight with David. Had two exceptional fights with 
uh, Dillian White, the first one that he could have, you know, he could have got the decision. The second one, I think he was ahead on points before getting caught in the 11th round. So Derek has proven that he is a world-class heavyweight. Alexander Usyk has got the biggest step up in terms of categories because he's a cruiserweight stepping up to the naturally bigger men. Um, in his first fight with Chaz Witherspoon, he proved that he has those boxing skills, but then he couldn't break down a fella that's not a world class heavyweight. So you know that Derek's going to come and he's going to come swinging and he's going to impose himself on Usyk. And it's whether we know technically Usyk can cope with things, but can he physically? And Derek is certainly the man in the heavyweight division to test that element. And obviously next week, the big fight, the big rematch, Deontay Wilde and Tyson Fury. Can you break this down for me? How do you see the second fight playing out? I think uh, all I'm going to say on that one is uh, that I think, I remember the first time the fight happened, Tyson had been out for a long time and had been sort of coming back from a lot of mental and physical things. This time, there's some momentum behind him in terms of being an, an active, competitive athlete. Um, and once two men have shared the ring with each other for 12 rounds, they kind of know the little thing, the little adjustments they have to make. The answers to this fight already exist in the first one. And another heavyweight fight coming up, Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce. Now I'm not going to talk too much about sort of the parting of ways, seem very amicable, uh, but how do you see that second, uh, sorry, that heavyweight fight playing out? It's a, it's a great matchup, uh, potentially a bit too soon for Daniel Dubois. Um, I think Joe's pedigree in terms of the people that he fought in the amateurs and the people that he beat in the amateurs and also the people that he's fought as a pro already, um, he's, he's got so much more experience than, than Daniel. What Daniel has is youth and that power and that natural young athleticism. But if that doesn't work for him in the early rounds, then it's going to get very, very difficult for Dubois because Joe is your worst nightmare once you start going into round five, six and seven. Final one. What is your sort of motivation? You've been in the game a long time, managed some great champions, got the sort of future you've, you're, you're with now. What, what would you say motivates you? Um, just enjoying the journey of life, right? That I, I'm, as I get older, I'm very uh, selective who I spend my time with. And so the fighters that I spend time with and, and, and spend my energy with aren't just uh, people that I believe in as fighters, but I believe in them as young men as well. And, and I've, got, I've got a great atmosphere and, and, a, and a great stable of uh, people. And so each day when I go into work, I've got a spring in my step. I'm happy, I'm enjoying it day by day. Tomorrow's not promised to anyone, so let's just enjoy each day as it is. Um, quickly, you've got a new gym. Um, talk to me about that. It's probably nice to have your own sort of space. And uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a hobo anymore. I've got, I've got, I've got my... Uh, boxing home again. Haven't had my own gym for a few years because first I moved abroad and then I was renting it. Things were happening so fast. But this this be, this been a long time, long time coming and uh, a long time in the planning. And yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted. Great stuff, Adam Booth. Thanks very much for your time, and I'll catch up with you soon. Cheers.